It's not every day you get to hurl a planet into the sun, so of course we might as well hurl planet number one. Why Earth? Honestly, it's not even that big. It's gonna be like throwing a pebble into a lake. Except for that pebble has seven and a half billion people on it. And the entire universe's supply of memes. What have I done? What's up guys, welcome back to Solar Smash, the only game that gives us the ability to solve all of the world's problems. Like, sure, rainwater may now be poisonous, economies are collapsing, the only thing spreading faster than monkeypox are forest fires, but I think with just a little bit of my help, we're gonna be able to fix everything. You see what I mean? No more problems. Like, how many people do you think are worried about the price of gas now? Go ahead, guess. I'll wait. While some of you guys are working on that quick math, I figured I would let you know that there's apparently been an update to Solar Smash. Like, I don't really keep up with these kind of things, but people have been telling me there could be new weapons, a handful of new planets, maybe some quality of life settings, but most importantly, new physics. You know, new ways that the planets interact to damage. I figured if that's the case, then we should probably try the most damage right off the bat and take a great big piss on the sun. Who has a slightly different supernova now? That looks a bit more intimidating. I think we all know how the world is going to react. It's not going to be positive, but it could be very different. <laughs> yeah, it used to just kind of pop. You know, like a ketchup packet in a kid's driveway, but now it just gets blown away, like a fart in the interstellar winds. Oh, and something else that a lot of people wanted to see was, can you use one of these dingleberries to regrow the world? If I shoot a healing rocket at it, then I don't think it's gonna regrow. Yeah, that little floating chunk of Florida isn't going to be enough. To be fair, if Florida was the seed to a new world, would we really water it? Actually, while we're on the subject, a bunch of you guys had a theory in the comments of last video that, like, apparently, millions of years ago, Mars was very different. It could have had water, it could have had atmosphere, it could have had life. There's no real easy way for scientists to know. Possibly because they don't have access to time-warping regeneration missiles. Now, I'm no space biologist, so when I get negative results, I take it personally and hold a bit of a grudge. <laughs> Alright then, I'll remember that, Mars. Son, could I maybe interest you in a regeneration missile or two? You could definitely use one after what I just did to you. No, okay, well then I guess everybody wants to poop all over my theories today. How about we pit you against one another? <laughs> the Martians will now attack the sun. And I would imagine the sun will attack back? <laughs> Who's really the winner in this scenario? Is it us? I feel like it's us. It's not the sun, and it's certainly not the Martians. Huh. Would you look at that? People always told me that being a petty smartass would never get me anywhere, but I'm willing to bet none of them have accidentally unlocked a secret planet. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. As far as secret planets go, the sun is a pretty cool one. No pun intended. I can't imagine Cthulhu would go for a bite out of this spicy meatball, right? Does he have the balls? Do squids have balls? I don't know. Oh, he actually went for it! He didn't get anything, but, you know, kudos for trying. Oh, uh, what am I doing? The first thing I should have tried was to freeze the sun. <laughs> it's definitely doing something. Wouldn't necessarily call it freezing, though. Also, now that it's been like a minute or two, I feel the need that I should point out that I'm well aware the sun isn't a planet. It's a star, but I just like to do those kind of things every now and then. You know, give the um actually people just a little bit of time to go down into the comments and slap their little Oscar Mayer wiener fingers against the keyboard to explain grade four science to people. I'm willing to bet a whole bunch of them are going back to edit those comments now. Hey, son. How you doing, big guy? You're looking very hot. Don't take that as a come on, but yeah, round again, pretty good. I know that there isn't a center to the sun. It's just, you know, more hydrogen, nuclear fusion, that kind of stuff. So 
I don't think we can make it explode necessarily, and I don't think we can freeze it down to one solid piece, but I might be able to just make the whole thing disappear. It feels like the smaller it gets, the brighter it gets, which could indicate a supernova. <laughs> well then, prove me partially wrong. I, I guess we can blow it up if we do enough damage. Now we're just left with a little sunny mist. Well, if that's the case, then do you think the Planet Destroyer could actually do anything here? Because, like, it's a Planet Destroyer, but this isn't a planet, it's a star. Usually this thing would show up, destabilize the core of a world, take off, and then the planet would explode. But it's like I said, the sun doesn't really have a core in that way. So there's a chance that the freeze ray is just an exception? Oh. Okay, no, it, it, it's getting a little bright. We're just gonna go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that... That would be the effect I was looking for and my 100th planet destroyed. Hold up a second. Uh, I feel like that may be off by a bit. Um, actually, the sun is not a planet. It is a star, so Captain Sauce is at 98 planets destroyed. It's not every day you get to hurl a planet into the sun, so of course we might as well hurl planet number one. Why Earth? Honestly, it's not even that big. It's gonna be like throwing a pebble into a lake. Except for that pebble has seven and a half billion people on it. And the entire universe's supply of memes. What have I done? Oh, here we go. They added a new technology planet, Ring World. Oh my god, that is so friggin' cool. <laughs> like, even if you're not a fan of Halo, just the idea of pretty much a space station in all reality, spinning and the centripetal force is what gives gravity to the inside layer, everything is facing outwards, and if you make it big enough, then you've got like a little artificial slice of planet. At least until I get my hands on it, do you think I could uh, have a Martian attack right about there? Does this thing have any defenses? Hello? Anybody? Oh. Nope. No shields. No defenses. No survivors on that section of the ring. I wonder what the tipping point is for, like, mass extinction on this thing. I can't imagine if you break the ring, people would be able to survive. Right? So if I use a big enough bomb, and I can hopefully clear right through a section of this thing, then... Oh, oh, the clouds move! <laughs> that is so freaking cool! <laughs> and pop! Okay, we got some dingle bear. Oh, yeah, you see what I mean? You break through and uh, they really didn't like that. But we have a lot of survivors. More than half. I'm impressed. I like the fact that you can tell that this thing is not the size of a planet. Yeah, we're only gonna be throwing a moon at it. Because it's only got like 240 million people living on it. It would be the size of a very, very, very big space station. Even then, I think the moon size might be a little bit exaggerated. Just a touch off. But it'll have a great impact nonetheless. <laughs> Seeing stuff float off is really cool. That's the new physics, I think. It's just the fact that there are, is going to be a whole bunch more debris, a, a whole bunch more kind of spread out of damage. I've seen in some cases you'll have random secondary explosions, except not here because everything is under control. We'll see how under control it is when a black hole opens on the other side. <laughs> so if I disconnect both ends, would they then kind of fly apart? No. I don't know how this thing is built, but it's definitely built well. Can you regenerate a technological world? I don't know. I I've always kind of assumed that it was more biological, but evidently not. It can rebuild broken technology as well. Interesting, I'm all out of those now, and I'm sure as hell not watching an ad for more at the moment, so... <laughs> you better be ready to deal with whatever I throw at you next. I still can't believe that this thing doesn't have any kind of defenses. 
Because it's like I was saying, if you have the ability to build something this big, like this technologically marvelous, then clearly we've had spaceships and we've been firing lasers at each other for hundreds, if not thousands of years. So it's not like they didn't see this coming. And yet they put up no fights, no defensive nukes, nothing. I could have defensive nukes. Do you want me to fire some defensive nukes? I'm all over it. Most of them will even hit the ship. Some, not so much. I don't think I'm hitting any of them anymore, actually. I'm shooting around this thing. How is that possible? How am I pulling, like, an interstellar Looney Tunes? <laughs> the nukes are even having a hard time figuring out where to go. Yeah, gravity is just strange with something like this, I suppose. I'm really bad at the whole defending planets thing. Who could have guessed? Now, they also released a couple of more standard-ish planets in Tatooine and Avalon. I think they're supposed to be parodies of Tatooine and Alderaan. So they're Star Wars-based planets, which means there could be some interesting stuff to see there. As a pretty big fan of Star Wars, it's really cool to think that somewhere down there on the surface of this dusty planet, Juke Flywalker is training to someday become a Shedi. Unfortunately, I already have a lightsaber, and mine is going to be quite a bit bigger than his. There is uh, only 20, uh, 13 million people living on this planet, which makes a whole lot of sense. Actually, I don't know how anybody is left alive after that. I practically gutted the thing. <gasps> hollowed it out like a pumpkin. Can I just keep going deeper and deeper? What if I actually do hollow it out? Does anybody care? What is happening right now? Usually the planet would have gone completely dark. Ooh, ooh, there it is. Just a little tiny bit more. I guess it hasn't exactly been the most hospitable up until now anyway. I don't think a force ghost has ever punched a planet in Star Wars. I guess this is a first time for everything. Go ahead, you got a big guy. Ooh, yeah, elbow deep. You see what I mean? Little like secondary explosions all over the place. Which I think are a result of the debris just flying off and then coming back down and smashing into stuff. It's really cool. That, uh, again, somehow left half the planet alive. They're strong out here, I'm telling you. Avalon, on the other hand, is not at all what I would have expected. You know, it's quite a bit darker, more lifeless, even if there is an absolutely ridiculous amount of life. How are there 35 billion people living on this world? Oh, this is gonna be my new playground for sure. We gotta try something like a, a storm. Maybe some uh, force lightning for this side of the planet. And just like that, I wiped out two Earths. Oh, that's a lot of debris. Yeah. The storm does a great job showing off that update difference. Everything is just gonna kind of fly away, and uh, there's still about three Earths left on this side. That's so ridiculous. You know what, I wanna go full-blown Thanos. I wanna see what happens when you kill 35 billion people at once. That's different. <gasps> oh no. Did I say Thanos? I, I meant I was gonna go full-blown Empire because yeah, Alderaan has experienced this before. A bit of a history with Death Stars. That is so cool. And then it's just gonna take off. Ooh, yeah, Leia's gonna be pissed. I wanna use that Death Star thing everywhere. It's so cool. I, mean, I guess the best I could do is just use a bunch of them. If I freeze time, then I can start Tippy tapping everywhere. We'll just see how many decide to show up. Fingers crossed on a bunch. I would consider four a bunch. Oh, they're not gonna fire and sink though. That's rough. All right, there might not even be a planet left to blow up, right? They're just gonna shoot straight through the middle of it. <laughs> that sound is so freaking cool. Uh, oh, they didn't get the whole way through. Almost. Just, like I said, destabilize the core. Oh, that's a dick move. Whoever showed up first, then took off, and then before the others could take off, the planet blew up and took them all out. <laughs> I guess there can really only be one Death Star. 
Wait, does that apply to all of the other ships as well? Like, would we get uh, an Imperial cruiser? No. Or how about a, a bunch of like V-wings or TIE fighters? No, screw me, I guess. Or screw those three billion people that had to die for me to figure that out. So how big is this planet? Am I, okay, I'm throwing a moon. So it's about the size of the world, Earth, I should say. There are lots of worlds, except it's got like five times the population, or it did. Now it has none? Really? So the moon just one tapped the entire thing, one and done. <laughs> Way to go, moon, you finally did something today. All right, if you know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Solar Smash, guys. I think I've seen everything. Like, I've tapped out all my ideas. I, I, I don't know if there are any other weapons or planets or things that I've missed, but if you guys wanna see more, as always, be sure to leave a like in the video, leave a comment letting me know, and maybe I'll return to screw up even more world soon. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.